Morning everyone, Mr. Kennedy here with another video for you. Today we're going to be looking at Onshape, which is a 3D modeling program, a CAD program. CAD stands for Computer Aided Drawing. This is a very easy to use CAD program, which is web-based, doesn't require any installation, um, is full open free access in education context. Um, and I've used this with year 8 students and all the way up to year 12 um, a very useful tool so what I want to do this morning is look with you at how to get it how to access it and then what the user interface looks like and how to use some of the basic tools to start modeling stuff and I'll make a series of videos here to move through the tools from this beginner tutorial today all the way up to sort of some more advanced complicated modeling so Let's jump into a screen share environment here. I've just got the Onshape website open to start with. So if you've never used this program before, you don't know what we're talking about, or you're ready to jump in and download on, or you know, download Onshape, um, just Google Onshape or come to Onshape.com. Here's the website. Now you, you could have a look around here if you want to. If you wanted to use this for student or school-based educational purposes, what you should do is come to Onshape.com/edu for education. And that will bring you to a slightly different website where you can access stuff here for students or for teachers, for educators. If you've never used this before and you're a student, you would come to For Students and follow the prompts there to create an account. So you could create an account here. You will at some point need to enter uh, your school's website. Um, and you will also need to enter what year you are going to graduate year 12, I believe, is part of the creation process. And you'll need to use your school email address. For teachers, you would come to For Educators um, and click on Get Started here in order to get yourself an account set up. If you've already got an account, though, then you would just go ahead and sign in. I've got it bookmarked, so I'll just quickly log in here. Okay. and. Once you follow that sign up process, you'll see a screen that looks like this. Mine has all of these uh, existing parts that I've modeled before that are already here. So yours may be blank at this point or have links to a few built in tutorials. But basically what you'll have is a screen that looks somewhat similar to this. You will see this little thing of this little bank of options over here and a create button up the top. Now, one of the great things about Onshape being web based is that it, it makes full use of cloud storage and the advantage of that is there's a huge public library library of things that other people have modeled so you could come to the public tab here and look at stuff that other people have made and there are some really crazy advanced things here um, pretty good for students to get inspiration like for example these these racing cars and that kind of thing um, and teachers you'll also need to Keep your eye on, you know, ensuring that your stu the things that your students are modeling are actually their own and that they haven't just downloaded stuff here. But it's cool to see some of the stuff that's there. You can also come to shared with me and I could see parts here that uh, students have shared with me to access or um, other other people have, have shared their on shape files with me to collaborate. And you can have multiple people working within a 3D space at the same time, just like you can with a Google Doc, which is one of those user advantages of Onshape. It makes it very easy for students to do group work. Um, where you can have you know two or three or a whole team of people inside the 3D space at the same time and some members could choose to lock on to another and kind of watch what they're doing or you could all be modeling things within the part environment at the same time and so on. My on shape is just your home page and what we could do to start today is if you hit on create document and then just create a, a, a new part whatever call that whatever you want test beginning first part doesn't matter and in a second it will load up into this the only downside to Onshape is that things will load the, the speed at which things load will be somewhat controlled by the speed of your internet and you do obviously need to have access to the internet uh, because it is a cloud storage web-based program so I haven't had to download anything here I haven't had to install anything which makes it great for schools because you don't need the students to have things installed at home you don't need the teachers to have uh, an administrator to install a program you never need to deal with different versions and updates uh, it's web based so I'm just within a Google Chrome browser here and you could use whatever browser you like um, and it makes it very easy to, to use the program when you don't have to do that especially in a school environment um, 
Now, when you open up a new 3D space, this is what you see. So this is the basic user interface. And I just want to lay out and, and explain a couple of things here before we actually start modeling. Across the, uh, at any time, you can click on on shape to go back to your the, the screen we were looking at before with a list of all of your parts. Across the top here, we have a list of tools. And like in any other uh, or most other programs, the tools that you see at any given time here on your toolbar will change based on what you're doing within the program at that moment. Um, and I'll, that will make more sense later when I show you. But for example, if I do a new sketch, which you'll learn about in a minute, I would see the sketch tools here, not these ones that I'm looking at at the moment. Um, and, and so on. So the tools will change just like in Word if you're creating a table you would see the table options at the top. If you're just typing you would see the type tools and so on. <clears throat> Down the left hand side here is a list of what's, what are referred to as features. It's also kind of like a list of steps or a list of things that you do will all turn up here. At the moment you can see the origin point and if you hover over that it highlights a dot in the middle of your 3D space and then you see these three surfaces or planes they're referred to as and if you click on those it will highlight those planes. These are your front, top and right planes and they're just reference points that we can use within our 3D space to start modeling or to dimension things and link things to which I'll teach you about in this series as well. Um, so as we do stuff the steps will appear here. Down the bottom there's a list of parts usually at least for the basic stuff that uh, a lot of students will be doing there will just be one part listed here but it is possible to model in one in one 3D space lots of different parts um, which you can do quite easily and then they would all be listed here and you could export them one at a time or whatever so that just keep your eye on that often if a student has or you know a user has multiple parts listed here it can be an accident and that could be the cause of problems that they're facing so that's a good thing to check and keep your eye on um, up the very top you have access to some other functions. There's an app store where you can build in some other apps for the program like rendering and simulation stuff. There's a learning center where you can access tutorials. Share is where you would go if you wanted to share your document with others with other people and in here is where you can access your account to make some changes. While, we're, while I'm talking about that, I'm going to make a change with you straight away because we're, well, I'm based in Australia and I want to use the metric system, it's important that you change this now as the default for every 3D space that you will, that you will create. So if you click on my account and you come here to preferences, these are the default units that everything that you create, every 3D sp space that you create will use these units. You want to change this to millimeters. Um, and you want to you know, choose however many decimal points you want. Grams, we can deal with mass and stuff as well. I'm not making any changes, so my save button's grayed out, but you should change this to millimeters and hit save. And then if you click on the on shape button at the top, or actually over the, if you click on the on shape button, it'll take you back to your list of parts and you can access your work from there. Or up the top right now, this looks like a new feature. You could click on return to document. It will bring you back to where you were. Changing the setting here in my account has just changed the default setting for all the parts that you will create from now on. It hasn't actually changed it for this particular studio. To do that, you need to click on the three lines up here next to um, the Onshape logo and come to Workspace Units. The reason that it won't be changed here is because this 3D space was created before we changed the default. I should have probably done that with you on the last screen, but that's okay. Now the other thing that's important to see is over on the right hand side here we have what I'm going to refer to as the uh, you know the 3D view cube or the 3D cube or something like that and you can use this to navigate around your object. So once I've got some stuff going on here it might help and make a bit more sense but you could click on front, um, you could click on the corners or on right and that will help you to navigate around your space. You can also right click on that to choose a couple of different things and there's this little cube with a down arrow there that gives you some other options which we'll use throughout the series as well. Um, so super basic all I'm going to do right now is make a cube and then we'll call that done for today and I'll make another video later to introduce some more complex steps so the whole idea within a CAD program is that you're making parts that will be manufactured in real life and what that means is that your parts need to have dimensions they need to use real life units to specify how big they are so and, and in order to create something in most CAD programs these days what you will do is you will create a 2D sketch so I'll draw something on this surface 
and then I'll choose a segment of that sketch and I'll extrude it or I'll stretch it to become a 3D object. So I'll make a cube here just as a basic example of that. If you click on sketch, it will pop up and say select a sketch plane. What this means is where do you want to do your drawing? And you get this pop-up box here with the thing that's blue. This is important to understand. Every time you're doing a step, you'll get a pop-up box. Some of them may have multiple options. Whichever one is blue is the one that you're currently you need to select something that will go into that box. So in this case, I need to select a sketch plane and whatever I click will be entered into that box. So I'm gonna to choose top plane. And you can see my sketch plane here has just changed to top plane. And now, like I was saying earlier, our tools up the top have changed. I'm now looking at the sketch tools. And so these are things like line, create a rectangle, create a circle and so on. And we'll work through all of these throughout the series. What I find easy to do at this point is to change your camera's view to be looking straight at the surface you're drawing on. There are a number of ways to do that. In this case where I'm just doing it on the top plane or one of these three basic orientations, I could just click on top on my 3D control box over here and it will spin me directly to that top view. An alternative is you could, because in, in some more complicated parts you might have sketch planes that are on a really weird angle, you can actually right click anywhere on your part or within your space and choose view normal to sketch plane. In this context normal basically means perpendicular looking at and so I want to change my view to be straight perpendicular looking at the sketch plane and so in this case that works. Now because of what I was doing up here, obviously my top is sideways, it doesn't matter, in this context it's fine where I was just about to do a cube, but later on if you've got a part and you're doing this and it's annoying you because your part is sideways, you can basically just use these arrows here to keep your view looking at the top but spin the camera around if you like. You could also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to make changes to your view. So once you're comfortable with your view, we can start to draw stuff. I'm going to just make a, a cube like I've been saying. So I want to choose the rectangle tool. Now you could draw a rectangle up here just by, I'm just, uh, pro tip, it's very, very rare in Onshape that you will ever need to click and drag. Click and hold your mouse button down and drag your mouse. Almost always you will click and release. I've got two hands off the mouse. Now move your mouse and then click again. You oh, I missed the click. And then you almost never need to click and drag. So that will make it a lot easier. And I've got this square with some numbers on it. That's how big the square is right now. And you'll notice that everything is blue. What blue means is that it's not locked in. It's not a permanent thing. So if I grab one of these corners, I can change it. If I grab the entire box, oh, I can't. I can't do that because it's, it's not locked to a dimension yet, but I can move this around. Now that's a bad thing. Because if I make a complex part and I want to change a dimension on something else later, it might, instead of changing the dimension of that thing, it might crush my square here or make a change here that I didn't want to happen. And that's vital when you're dealing with stuff that's going to be manufactured in real life. Maybe you're making a part for an engine when you're a, whatever, an engineer in the real world, and you need to make sure that everything's locked down. So what I'm going to make use of here is this tool. This is going to be your best friend in Onshape. Um, it's called the Dimension Tool. You can access this quickly by just hitting D on your keyboard, D for Dimension. You need to use this all the time to lock everything down and make sure that everything stays as you want it and things don't change accidentally. If you get used to using this a lot, it will drastically reduce the amount of errors and issues you have within a CAD program. So just trust me there, pro tip, every time you draw something, put a dimension on it. So in this case I'm drawing a cube. Let's say I want to make a, a 3 centimeter or a 30 millimeter cube. I'm going to hit the D button to access my dimension tool or I could just click it up there and it will go blue to say that it's selected. And now I'm going to come and click on a line. Again, I'm not clicking and dragging. I've just clicked. I'm going to move my mouse away and now click again. What this is telling me is that this line is currently 51.6216 millimeters and I want to change that in this case to 30 millimeters. Fun fact, these boxes can take equations, and that will be relevant in a minute. You can actually type in equations there and it will solve it for you. If you changed your default workspace units to centimeters, then you would want to make this 3, not 30, or you'll end up with a part that's too big. I know that my, un my default unit system is millimeters, so I'll make this 30 and hit enter, and it crushes that. Now it did this, it did the height as well, but that's because it was doing proportional. This is still not actually locked down. You can see that that's not 30, it's 29.64. So I'm going to change the height there as well to 30. 
The reason that this is still blue, even though I know now that it has to be a 30 by 30 square and I can't change the size of my square, what I can do is move it around. It's not locked down in place and I want to make sure that that's controlled as well. So I'm going to use my dimension tool again and what I can do now is actually set the distance between a line and the origin point or this line. Now this line is actually just that's the side of my right plane that you're looking at. And I can set the distance from this line to there. So what I'm doing here is I'm pressing my dimension tool, clicking this line. Again, I'm not dragging. Now instead of clicking to apply this height dimension, I'm going to come and hover over this. You can see it goes orange. If anything goes orange at any point, it means if you click right now, you're going to, you're going to select it. That's what orange means. So I want to choose that and now you can see that my line changed. What I'm doing now is I'm setting a dimension between this edge and this line. And I can say this is going to be however big I want it to be. Now I want my cube to be centered around this origin point and I know that my cube, my square here is 30 millimeters wide. So I want this to be 15 millimeters. Just to demonstrate how the equations work, what I could actually do here is say I know this is 30 and I want it to be half of that. So I could be 30 slash or divided by 2. Obviously in this case you wouldn't do it because we all know that's 15 but if you've got some obscure number like 74.317 and you need to do a quarter of that and it's just too hard basket in your head you can just type in the equation and it's a lot faster. Hit enter and it moves my, my square over. So now I know this is 30 wide and this edge is 15 millimeters away from the center point and I could do the same here from the top of the square to the center and make that 15 as well. There's my square. I'm done. Now I want to turn this square into a 3D cube. It's, see, you'll notice now it's all black. Everything's locked in. I can't change the width of it. I can't change the height of it. And I can't move it around the space. So if you finish, you could either hit tick here to exit the sketch and all your dimensions will go away, but they're still there. And you can see now that I've got a square that's on this plane and that's it. To turn this now into a cube, we want to choose the extrude tool, which by the way, you could do when you were still inside your sketch. That's the phrase that I like to use when you're inside your sketch, which you know because you've got access to the sketch tools here and the sketch on your feature tree or your feature list is blue so that you know you're inside the sketch. You've got the extrude button there. It doesn't matter whether you click it here or whether you hit this green tick to exit your sketch. Now you can see all these 3D tools and the sketch on your feature tree is not blue, so I'm outside the sketch. You could choose your extrude button here. They'll do the same thing. The only difference is if you're inside the sketch and you hit extrude, it will grab that sketch automatically. Whereas in this case, like I was explaining before, we've got this pop up and this thing is blue. It's saying what are the faces or the sketch regions that you want to extrude. So what you need to do now is come and select the surface or the piece of sketch that you want to stretch. In this case, it's my square. So if I click on that, the blind means I want to extrude this or stretch it blindly in one direction. I just want it to go one direction and you can swap the direction. So right now it's going up. If I wanted that to go down, you could click on this arrow and it will go down. The default length is 25. I want to make this a cube, so I want it to be 30. Now, I still want this to be centered around that origin point. I don't want it to just go up or down. So what I could do here is change blind to... Oh, they've moved it. It used to be in here. I can see what they've done now is they've moved it to a tick box here to symmetric. So you click on that and now I've said the total height of this cube needs to be 30 millimeters. It will make it go 15 millimeters above and 15 millimeters below the sketch plane. And so that's it and you hit tick and there's your cube. Now there are so many more functions within Onshape and it's actually such a powerful tool and there's so many things that we can do and I want to step you through those gradually over the next few videos but we're already up to almost a 20 minute video so we'll stop there and in the next video we might start to build some more complex shapes but I hope this was a good introduction to what Onshape is, what the user interface looks like and how to use the super basic sketch tool and extrude tool to make something like a cube. If you have any questions, feel free to stick a comment on the video or get in touch with me, however works for you. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.